Hey there, everybody. It's me, Jason the Cartoon Fan. Man, it's been a long time since I opened a video with my traditional sign-on. But anyways, since the Loud House's two upcoming complete season DVD sets aren't arriving until October 19th, 2021, I decided to make a couple of smaller merchandise videos in between my StocktonCon 2021 pickups video and my double feature unboxing of those two sets to satisfy your cravings. For the first of these filler merchandise videos, I'll be unboxing the Blu-ray release of my favorite Disney animated canon movie in quite some time, Raya and the Last Dragon. I didn't see Raya when it was playing in theaters for two reasons. One, my local movie theater chain, Cinemark, refused to even carry it. And two, even if it did, I was the only person in my family who wanted to see the film, since the others aren't really into cartoons as much as I am. Those of you who saw my Sponge on the Run Blu-ray unboxing will remember me saying that the latter circumstance also prevented me from seeing the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water on the big screen in 2015. Eventually, though, I finally got the chance to watch the movie on Friday, August 20th, 2021, the last day of my summer visit to my mom's house in Oregon thanks to Disney Plus. If I'm going to be completely honest here, I personally feel like Walt Disney Animation Studios has been in a bit of an artistic rut for about half a decade now. Moana was fun, but felt a bit too similar to what came before, without very much to keep it unique. A far cry from the animated canon film from just a few months earlier, Zootopia. Ralph Breaks the Internet has generally been seen as an extremely disappointing follow-up to the original Wreck-It Ralph, even by people like me who actually enjoyed it. Finally, while Frozen 2 was surprisingly great, it was also completely unnecessary considering its status as a follow-up to a film that Disney has already milked for all it's worth. Plus, while they technically aren't part of the canon, let's not forget Disney's live-action remakes, which just scream creative bankruptcy. After quite a while of almost consistently being underwhelmed, by Disney's movies produced by Walt Disney Pictures themselves, I was pretty much ready to give up on the former bread and butter division of the Walt Disney Company in favor of focusing my Disney-related attention solely on Pixar, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Disney's animated television shows like Big City Greens, Amphibia, and The Owl House. Luckily, not to mention thankfully though, Raya and the Last Dragon restored my fate in the homegrown Disney movie aspect of the Walt Disney Company. Not only is the movie completely original, it's also really, really good. Do you want a Disney movie that will take you back to the early 2000s? when the studio's animated features all tried something different and weren't all just your stock standard song-filled Broadway-style fairy tale? If so, then Raya is the modern Disney flick for you. Disney can be very hit or miss whenever they break out of their comfort zone. Sometimes, you get some of the absolute best movies in the animated canon such as The Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis The Lost Empire, and Lilo and Stitch, aka the holy trinity of 2000s era Disney. Other times, you get films that are fine enough, but don't quite live up to their potential, such as Brother Bear and Treasure Planet. 
When Disney's attempts to break new ground outright flop, however, you get something completely abysmal. The less said about Home on the Range and Chicken Little, the better. While Raya doesn't exactly reach the incredible heights of the first three Disney animated features I mentioned earlier, it's very darn close to accomplishing that difficult goal. While the concept of a serious adventure movie with a healthy, healthy dose of comedy sprinkled in had already been done before in Atlantis and Treasure Planet, Raya and the Last Dragon puts an engaging spin on said concept by taking it in a fantastical direction instead of a sci-fi one. Not only that, but we have a brand new Disney princess as the main protagonist of this particular take on the subgenre, which is also something we haven't really seen before. Yes, Atlantis had Princess Kada, but that movie was not her story, it was my love's. By putting these simple but ingenious spins on certain aspects of older Disney films, Walt Disney Animation Studios has reinvented the wheel without abandoning all its key features. Of course, you could have the most groundbreaking ideas for a movie. It might, it might still end up being terrible or subpar at best because its characters aren't well written. But that is not the case with Raya and the Last Dragon. Raya is a very likable main character because she has the same relatable can-do attitude and emotional awkwardness as a person around her age in real life, something that even some of the very best Disney princesses aren't quite able to showcase. We still like them for different reasons, but this isn't the time for me to dive into an explanation on why. Sisu, the last dragon, is the exact opposite in terms of personality. She has a knack for wisecracks and an energetic demeanor, so she and Raya bounce off of each other very well when the movie decides to make you laugh. However, most of the time, their contrasting personalities are used to help each other grow as characters, like the stars of any good adventure movie. Place them in a beautifully rendered world with interesting lore behind it, alongside an entertaining group of side characters and multi-layered antagonists, one of whom having a very complicated relationship with Raya, and you've got Disney's best animated movie that wasn't from Pixar in five years. It's not one of the all-time greatest Disney animated canon films, as a few bloated story elements drag the experience down a little, but it's still very good and a breath of fresh air. Saying anything else would completely spoil the film for viewers who haven't seen it yet. And I really want those people to give the film a try. Those of you who have seen the, my three-parter on all the Disney movies I owned on physical media prior to this one will know that I must have really, really liked this movie because I bought Raya and the Last Dragon on Blu-ray brand new for full price. For those of you who haven't seen that video yet, however, let me elaborate. I used to collect Disney movies semi-regularly on disc back when physical media was the only way you could reliably view them. However, now that my family has Disney+, Plus, I don't see the point anymore. Don't get me wrong, I love collecting physical media. It's just that Disney's Blu-ray, and in many cases, even DVD releases of its movies are far more expensive than the new physical media releases from rival studios. Why would I want to pay $30 to own a brand new Disney movie on disc when I could use that exact same amount of money to buy a full season, or in some cases, even the complete series 
of a television show. Sure, you get a bunch of special features that you won't find if you stream the movie, but even when those are put into consideration, a multi-disc set of a television series is a far better value for your entertainment dollar, especially in the case of television shows that have special features of their very own on their physical media releases. As a result of these factors, I now only buy a Disney film on disc if it's a flick that I couldn't live without owning on disc and or found on physical media for an insanely low price. Raya obviously falls in the former category. I purchased this Blu-ray at Target for $28, but I love the movie featured on it so much that I was more than willing to ignore the high asking price this time around. Without further ado, let's take a look at the packaging for this Blu-ray. I know for a fact that this Blu-ray originally had a slipcover on it, but sadly, I wasn't able to get a copy back when there was a slipcover slip cover on it. Alrighty, so here is the front cover featuring Raya and Sisu together. And on the top, we see that this release includes a Blu-ray, a DVD, and a, a digital copy code. And then we see the Disney and Raya and the Last Dragon logos. And right below that, we have a, a sticker where Disney is trying really hard to convince you to add this Blu-ray to your collection of movies from the company that you own on disc, assuming that you have any. <laughs> and some, a little bit of a description for some of the special features included on the Blu-ray. Here is the spine which features the Disney Blu-ray icon, the Disney and Raya and the Last Dragon logos, a character profile of Raya herself, and the stock number. Here is the back, featuring some really awesome looking thumbnails from the movie, a couple of quotes from reviews of the film, with... G. Allen Johnson of the San Francisco Chronicle calling it an instant animated classic. And Laura Circuel of whattowatch.com saying that the movie has supreme storytelling, a brilliant score, and fantastic animation, which I mostly agree with. And the description reads... Walt Disney Animation Studios' Raya and the Last Dragon travels to the fantasy world of Kumandra, where humans and dragons live together in harmony long ago. But when evil threatened the land, the dragons sacrificed themselves to save humanity. Now, 500 years later, that same evil has returned, and it's up to a lone warrior, Raya, to track down the legendary last dragon to restore the fractured land and unite its divided people. Alrighty, then we have a little listing of all the special features included on the Blu-ray. And right below that, we have the Disney Castle logo and some legal information, which you can pause here if you want to read. You know, it's been so long since I purchased a new Disney title on physical media that I didn't even know that Disney changed the name of their Disney Movie Rewards program until discovering this Blu-ray. Apparently, now it's called Disney Movie Insiders. 
Alrighty, so without further ado, let's open this Blu-ray up and see what we have inside. Or to be more accurate, the case, but you know, same difference. Okay, so let's take a look inside the case. We have the digital copy code, which I'm not even going to try to redeem since I can watch this movie digitally on Disney+. Plus. So here is a free digital copy code I have not used for you viewers watching this video to use. First person to use the code, I hope you enjoy your free movie. And then we have a second insert advertising the Disney Movie Club. Okay. Okay. So, no surprise here for anybody who has purchased a Blu-ray release of a Disney movie within the past six years. We have a generic blue disc for the Blu-ray and a generic white disc for the DVD. As for the actual review, this Blu-ray release of Raya and the Last Dragon gets a 5 out of 5 stars. Since this is a modern, big-budget, animated movie we're talking about, the AV quality is stunning. The picture perfectly captures the sharp intensity and boldness of the film's world for a smaller screen resolution, and the Dolby Digital 7.1 Looseless Audio Track fully plummets you into the creative environments, as is the standard for pretty much every Disney Blu-ray since the very beginning in 2006. The movie also has optional English subtitles and offers both dubs and subtitles in Spanish and French. The special features are also great, as long as you are watching the Blu-ray. That's right, Disney has once again screwed over people who haven't moved on from DVD yet by making Raya's release on that disc format completely bare bones, despite it having more than enough space to include the 90 minutes worth of extras on offer here. Still, the extras are pretty good. As the first animated canon film to come out after the COVID-19 pandemic began, a good chunk of Raya's production had to be done by its cast and crew at home. So the majority of the special features revolve around the hard work put into completing the film in time for its March 5th, 2021 release date in theaters. We also get a featurette on the obligatory Easter eggs referencing previous Disney films that are hidden in this movie, a high quality tribute to the aspects of, South, of Southeast Asian culture featured in the film, and 19 minutes worth of deleted scenes. The extras are sure to entertain anybody who's interested in knowing about how Raya and the Last Dragon was made. The only notable type of special feature that isn't included here is an audio commentary, but the pandemic most likely prevented one from being recorded, so I'm going to let it slide this time around. Basically, if you liked the movie, then the Blu-ray is an easy recommendation. 
as long as you are willing to pay so much money in order to own it on disc. Or, as a famous animated orange tabby cat once said, just remember what you pay to get in. And with that, we've officially reached the end of this video. Let me know your thoughts on the movie by leaving a comment on it. Also, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, preferably with notifications on, if you haven't already done so. Until next time, this is Jason the Cartoon Fan, signing off.